I'm Fred McClymans, and on this edition of Perspectives, I'm talking big data with Julie Hunt. Julie's a good friend of mine who lives inside the world of software technology, data, and analytics, with a unique perspective on how these impact our daily lives. We've all heard about big data. In fact, it's hard to avoid it. It's now become part of our business lexicon in everything from sales and marketing to how to win in politics. It's everywhere. But what does that really mean? Julie, welcome to Perspectives. Great to be here, Fred. I always love chatting with you. Likewise. Always, always a pleasure. I'm always curious about the why, and since this is Perspectives, I've got to ask you why. Um, how did you form your perspective on, uh, on big data? Well, there's, there's probably two reasons that I find big data interesting. Part of it is because I have a long time background in data management, and we, of course, worked a great deal with relational data, but came across many formats that were complex or even the worst kind of a format to work with, which would be content, where it's very difficult to mine the text and then try to retain the context or sentiment of that text that you're mining. Uh, we come along into current times and very interesting sources of data have popped up and unfortunately they've all been pulled into a, a title like big data. Uh, there are segments of data that are large volumes of say relational data that could qualify as big data, but I really like the Gartner definition which is extreme information. And the real idea behind big data, these are the hard kinds of information and data to get at, to be able to pull out something valuable and meaningful. And uh, social media in particular has uh, brought in some very interesting contextually related types of information that's quite valuable to businesses. Um, other kinds of data that are proliferating are come from uh, sensors, automated ways of both producing and using data. So it's an exciting area, but the biggest problem is not only figuring out how to process it, but what are you going to do with it? Do you really even need your big data? Let's step back for a second and kind of look at just big data and, and what it is. We've always had big data around us, correct? We just never really had access to it before. What changed a lot of things for actually big data growing is our improvements in technology, our storage of data, our ability for an organization to store huge amounts of data that they can wait on uh, being able to process. They don't have to deal with it in real time. They can store it and use it later. So a lot of organizations have done that. And now they're like scratching their heads and saying, what are we going to do with this? Other things have happened like people like GE who have been very innovative in realizing that machine generated data is quite valuable and it's not just valuable for the operations that that data is, is helping to perform, but what else do you do with it? What does it tell you about your business? What does it tell you about the future? So we've had some great innovative thinking around what do we do with all this data? and not just think of it as transactional data or something to store for a while and, and then archive and do away with. That data can continue to have value over time and data sources combined with other data sources might reveal some very surprising and, and very useful things. Go back 100 years ago, what would have been the equivalent of big data back then? Is there anything that we can look back to and go, you know, here, yeah, today we know everything. We have sensors embedded in everything around us. We monitor our credit card transactions. Um, you know, our cars have sensors in there. Um, but at the same time, 100 years ago, we didn't have that. But we still had data around us. We did, but I think this is why we're hearing uh, different writers and thinkers in this area call this uh, a revolution or uh, a new direction where we have the Internet of Things or the uh, uh, industrial Internet, that this is a, a re the biggest revolution since the industrial age, that things have changed totally. So I'm not sure we have anything on par with this data economy. Uh, it, and again, it's the idea of being able to store it process it, and then have the tools to do something with it. We've never had this kind of problem to solve before. So why is perspective important to big data, to both understanding it, to using it, and maybe feeling comfortable with it? Well, the data alone doesn't really have any value. It's just data. It's what do you want to do with it? Uh, some people approach using big data, no matter what the source is, uh, to answer questions. They have questions they want to know about 
what are their customer behaviors might be, or what direction should they take product development? Um, how should they be innovating their own business model? I mean, there are some very interesting applications, but that's the point. Uh, it's the application, not the data. Also, with big data, it's just one data source. So, you know, the idea of mashups permeates all of this. The idea of bringing in many different kinds of data, uh, recombining it, having different analytical models, different data models to be able to process all the data. But you need to have a purpose. Are you trying to solve problems? Do you have questions to answer? Or we can go to the types of activities that a company like eBay uh, takes on where they want the data to tell them something. So they have analytical models to look at the patterns of the data itself and do a lot of experimentation to see if it's going to open up new avenues of innovation. In the final piece, you still need people. You need people to understand, does this have any value for our business or our goals? Do we have any reason to consider this and the other ways that we are making decisions, taking actions, looking at the future of our company? So big data is not the end all and be all. It's not the final answer. It's a piece of the many things that most organizations need to do to stay competitive and really move forward with real information about things that will help them make really good decisions. One of the things that, uh, that people are concerned about is abuse of big data. And I think that's it's certainly justified because if you think about data, you know, one person may create data or may collect data for a particular purpose, but that data doesn't go away. It's there, it's, it's stored in, in memory somewhere. And I think, you know, can very often be a value, perhaps even significant value to people after the fact, especially if you take, uh, you know, one of my favorite techniques, which is to look at an event uh, and link that to other events and other occurrences to start to look at the, the meta picture and see what's the larger trend, what, what's the being influenced there, the influence chain here. And I think with big data, we have that. We have the ability now to, you know, connect multiple sources of data that we never had before to find so, some pretty interesting things. But there's also the opportunity, since we didn't create the data initially, to potentially misinterpret the data. Absolutely, absolutely. I think there's two issues here. Um, one would be the privacy and the security of whatever the source of that data is. And especially if we're looking at people-related data, uh, you know, I have those concerns, you do too, but you can de-identify data and still process the other attributes of that data and use it in meaningful ways. And I do know that, that many organizations do that. Now, in terms of interpreting, absolutely, that has to be a huge caveat, but when you have data scientists, that favorite term that we hear these days, or data analysts, uh, looking at data, that should be going into their algorithms, that should be going into their analytical models, and then there should be a healthy sense of skepticism of anything that comes out of big data. And that's why I say you have to combine one source of data with other sources of data or the results of different analytics and look at it as a composite and make those decisions. It, do we have something standing out that doesn't look right? Why doesn't it look right? This is true of any analytical process. And this is, again, why I say humans need to be involved in this. You need your business experts in there, your data experts, uh, anybody who's working with you in terms of future trends and that sort of thing. It's not you're going to, you know, do the magic eight ball and the final answer pops up because you shake it a few times. Uh, you're going to shake it a lot and you're probably going to have a lot of different magic eight balls coming up with different answers. And then you work through those problems. So it's it's a series of uh, experiments, but you have to have a reality check for anything that's coming out of big data. In some some ways, it's easy to tell the patterns that are emerging are telling you something and other ways not. Again, it depends on the kind of problem you're trying to solve. Let's take a, a look at uh, the application uh, of big data and some things that people need to keep in mind. Recognizing that big data is something that could be of use to an advertising agency, it could be of use to a city planner, to a politician, uh, you know, even to a, a large enterprise organization. If you take all of them into account and kind of just step back a bit, what are three things that everybody needs to just remember about big data? Well, I, I think one of the things that uh, to keep in mind is big data really isn't social media data because a lot of people like to call that out as the biggest segment of, of data. But actually, the biggest area of interest for big data is sensor data or machine-to-machine -machine data, M-to-M. 
Uh, this is an area that's growing prolifically. So you can think of the telecom networks around the world, the type of data that's just constantly generated every minute and how important and valuable that is. Uh, the data that comes out of a, an electric utility where they're managing their grid of power and, and the data itself helps improve operations, but it takes on a value beyond that. And it may not even just pertain to the industry. It could have value to other industries. It's something that you alluded to, where you're, you're taking different events and putting them together to understand a new pattern. Well, data works the same way, and you may have data from one industry you need to look at with another industry or another purpose, and new light bulbs can go off. So we now see more organizations selling their data to other organizations or other industries. Uh, the CDC is a huge procurer of all kinds of this kind of big data to understand more about disease and how it's spread and how to maintain health. I mean, these are exciting, wonderful developments. And it, it doesn't involve any identity, any privacy. It's taking data and doing more with it. Um, so it's, it's excellent to see different organizations understanding the value of this. Now, another thing to understand is, is, is we've talked about a bit is how messy big data is. It takes a lot of work to take it through processing and get to the point where you're getting something to work with, and it will take a lot of testing. What's helping that is, of course, we have these great technologies that are lower cost. Uh, you have things like Hadoop and then a lot of middleware that can run on lower cost commodity uh, hardware to take the cost out of it so you actually can have the leeway in terms of infrastructure to test and experiment and see what kinds of answers that you can come up with. And that's very good. But you also have to have some very smart people driving that effort. You have to marry, as we should in businesses anyway, technology with business goals so that we understand that we're doing something of value. It, it sounds almost as if you're talking there about not rushing to judgment with big data. I think that's correct. And the people who find the biggest, best results are the ones who do a lot of that testing and experimenting and also collaborating with many different roles just to bring in those perspectives to make sure that uh, uh, they are on the right track. Even if they're finding a new track that nobody's looked at, we have domain experts or subject matter experts who can bring in their information and their thoughts to say, I think we're on to something. Let's correlate this with these other data sources and see what we can figure out from there. I think what I really want to emphasize over and over again is this big data is not an end all and be all. It's the human perspective, the human brain that still is a fabulous data processor because it can connect dots in ways that a lot of really intricate algorithms are never going to be able to do it to recognize patterns. So the, the, the people that matter in enterprises need to be involved in these processes to make sure you're really doing work that's going to help. I think that's a great point. You know, we shouldn't be using big data and big data systems as a decision tool. It should be something that assists us in making a decision. Absolutely. I work quite a bit with information and data in terms of market intelligence to uh, help software vendors figure out customer uh, needs and how to connect with them, product directions, and so forth. And years ago, I met a young woman who wanted to go into the market intelligence field, and she asked me what my best tool was for developing a market intelligence, collecting the information, analyzing it, coming up with recommendations and next steps. And I told her it was my brain. And she looked at me flabbergasted because she was expecting me to, you know, rattle off some piece of software, really cool stuff. But it's my brain that does more than anything. I can use tools to help me do parts of it, but it's still me. I can take a starting point with certain pieces of information and realize that I've got some seemingly dis disparate pieces of information that I should put with that. And what is that going to tell me? And then I might then have a whole new idea of where to look for more information that can actually fine-tune, sharpen, and bring a whole new perspective to what we need to understand from all of the information I collected. And I can realize I have some sources I no longer need to consider because they no longer have relevance, and now I need to switch channels on what I'm doing. Big data, it's, all, it's the same kind of exercise. And I think the bottom line question always is for any business, though, is, is this data going to help me or not? If it's not something that your organization is interested in because the sources aren't things that you are concerned with, then you probably don't need to be processing big data. And you may have only certain subsets of big data that you need to be working with. You may you know, have a company that's 
does have those large volumes of relational data that you have to get through for transactional and operational purposes, that's fine. That's what you concentrate on. You don't care about sensor data or social media data. It's not something that pertains to what you really need to be looking at. Julie, thank you for bringing your perspective on big data. I certainly appreciate it and would love to have you back. Uh, maybe we can talk next time about uh, data and technology obsolescence, perhaps. Yeah, technology, of course, runs on data. And what companies are doing with their technologies in terms of strategies is a very interesting area. Fantastic. Well, we'll save that for uh, another edition of Perspectives. Julie, thank you very much. Have a great day.